Hey there everybody. In this video we are going to talk about a unique set of series and they are called convergent series and we'll, we'll get into the reason why here in one second. Uh, but the convergence, but with these two series, what we're going to do to demonstrate what happens with this is we are going to take each series and we are going to sum them up to the 10th term, the 15th term, and the 20th term. And we're going to do this for both sets of series so we can see what happens with each one. Now, before we get started, we have to determine is this geometric or is this arithmetic? Uh, when we look at this, we can see that in both of these things, it's neither one is decreasing at any given or any set rate. It's not decreasing at a constant rate. So that should be a clue that this is a geometric series. So when you have a geometric series, you take the second term and divide, divide it by the first term, and you come up with a value. And then you take the third term and you divide it by the second term and you get, come up with a value and you should start seeing the same value coming along and that is going to be our common ratio so for this case our common ratio is 0 0.5 so what we're going to do is we're going to use our geometric summation formula and we said that was s of n so the summation up to the nth term is equal to u of 1 times r to the n minus 1 sorry r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Or you may have seen this, uh, this same formula written slightly differently where we have u of 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Both of these two things will get you the same value uh, with your general summation of geometric series. I'm going to use the first one for no other reason other than that's the one that I'm, I use more frequently. Um, no rhyme, no reason why I do it. That's just the one that I, that I pick. So starting with our first series, we're going to this, we're going to add this up to the tenth term. Our common ratio is 0 0.5. Our first term is 2. So plugging it into that first equation, we've got 2 times 0 0.5 raised to the power of 10 minus 1 over 0 0.5 minus 1. Now, as I just start punching this into a calculator, I get this massive number where I've got 0 0.00098 minus 1 over negative 0 0.5. And as I simplify that with my calculator, I'm going to get 3.996. All right, so we get something kind of close to 4. And then as we get to S of 15, we're going to do the same thing. 2 times 0 0.5 to the 15th power minus 1 over 0 0.5 minus 1. Bust out the calculator and we get 2 to the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0003 minus 1 over negative 0 0.5. Simplify that and we get 3.99988. You might see where this is going here. And then as we go with the S of 20, We've got 2 times 0 0.5 to the 20th power minus 1 0 over 0 0.5 minus 1. Take that out and expand it, and we get, what do we get? We get 2 times 0 0.00000095 minus 1 divided by negative 0 0.5. Simplify that, and we get 3.999996. Holy smokes. So as we're doing this, we can see that we are approaching and getting closer and closer to a number. We're getting closer and closer to approximately 4. But we're not actually getting to 4. Every single time you're going to see this happen, it's going to keep the, the decimal is just going to get go out further and further and further, and you're going to keep on getting closer and closer to 4, but you're never going to actually get to 4. So we just say that this thing approaches 4. Okay? So now let's look at the second series. So again, it's not going down in any kind of common, constant manner. We do see that it's jumping between a positive and a negative value. So that might give us a clue that we're going to have a negative common ratio. But we're going to find that common ratio the same way. We're going to take the second term, divide it by the first term, and we're going to get negative 0 0.25. Take the third term, divide it by the second term, and we still get negative 0 0.25. And since we've got a fourth term here, let's do it just to just a triple check. So we got the fourth term divided by the third term, and we still get negative 0 
So our common ratio here is negative 0.25. So we're still going to use that same first summation formula, u of 1 times r to the nth power minus 1 all over r minus 1. So we're going to plug in our values, 240, negative 0.25 to the 10th power, the denominator, plug it all in, and we get 240 times 0, 0, 0, 0, 6 zeros, 9, 5, minus 1 over negative 1.25. So you'll probably recognize that that 240 is going to be multiplied by a very small negative number, but then we're going to divide by a negative number, so we're going to come out with 191. 0.998. Okay, so you probably think you know where this is going, so, but let's try S of 15 just to be safe. Alright, so we got 240 times negative 0.25 to the 15th over negative 0.25 minus 1. Multiply that out. Now we've got nine zeros in here, minus 1 over negative 1.25. And when we calculate that, you can double check me here. But when we calculate that, we get negative 192.0000002. Now, that's a little different than the previous one, but, but that's okay. Let's, let's hold on. Let's see what happens with 20. So as we do our summation up to 20, we have 240, negative 0 0.25 to the 20th, and so on. We're going to expand this, and now we've got 13 zeros on here. And we're going to uh, minus 1, so again, we're going to have a small negative number, divide by a negative number, so we're going to come out with a positive, and that positive is 191.999999998. Yikes. So what's happening as we're doing uh, S of 10, S of 15, S of 20? Well, if we look at a number line and we're looking at 192, S of 10 is over here on the left. S of 15 jumps over on the right, but it's a little bit closer to 192. Because you're going out further on the decimal, so you're getting closer to 192. And then as we look at S of 20, it jumps back even closer on the other side. So we're getting even closer to 192. So it's doing a very similar thing to the, the, to the red uh, uh, summations, except it's bouncing back and forth on either side. And that's the nature of a negative common ratio with, uh, with a converging series. So what happens is we're getting closer and closer to 192, but just like above, we're never going to actually get to 192. So our, our, we, we approach 192, but we don't get there. So what does all of this mean? How can we tie all of this together? Well, as S of n gets very large, and I just say very large, I know 10, 15, 20, that's not a, a real large summation, but just think of this as we could keep on going out further and further, and I think you would see how, how these values get closer and closer. Um, or sometimes we can say as n approaches infinity, so our, our term number that we're adding, adding up to is getting closer to infinity, then what happens? Well, if we have a common ratio, notice these one's positive and one negative, but along with that positive and negative, they are both between uh, the absolute value of 0 and 1. So if you think of r, if you think of like a very small r, um, a fractional r between 0 and 1, whether that's positive or negative, the absolute value of that thing is going to be less than 1, or you could say uh, that it's between negative 1 and 1. Um, but then we can say that S of n converges towards one specific number. Also, keep in mind this, that uh, also notice that uh, R of n, in our formula, in our summation formula, what happens with that? Well, if we look here, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Whether it's positive or negative, it's getting smaller and smaller. So R of n actually is approaching 0. So that's kind of unique as well. So because we mathemati mathematicians are kind of lazy and we don't like to write as much, what we're going to say is uh, that we can come up with a general formula of S of n is equal to U of 1 over 1 minus R. Now wait a minute. Why did we just switch this to 1 minus R when we've been using R minus 1 the whole time? Well, 
because we're going to kind of eliminate that that uh, r of n in the numerator, r of n uh, minus 1, because we know that's going to get smaller and smaller, it's going to be practically 0, we don't want to have to calculate that out every single time, we flip to the 1 minus r to eliminate any extra negatives. So if you notice that uh, if we have u, uh, u of 1 divided by, let's say our first one, 0 0.5, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.5. So now we're taking a positive u of 1 divided by a positive 0 0.5. Even though on the top it was a negative, but that's because we were subtracting 1 from our small number. So we were getting a negative over a negative. So what this does is it gets rid of that extra negative so we can have uh, a nice positive value. And with our blue example, uh, our, neg our r is a negative value. So if we do 1 minus a negative value, we're going to have 1 plus that. So again, that eliminates that, that extra negative in case uh, u of 1 is positive. So what it does is it just kind of helps balance things out so we don't go to the wrong side of our number line. Now, of course, if u of 1 is negative, then we'll end up with a negative value, and that's perfectly fine. But we want to make sure that we're keeping it in the right placement. So we use 1 minus r instead of r minus 1. So... This is all good, and this is, again is called a uh, convergent geometric series, or as uh, the series sums as n tends towards infinity. Those are a couple of the different ways that we that we write write this or talk about this. So hopefully this helps. Again, keep in mind this is only for when you've got a common ratio between negative one and one. All right, and and that value does not equal zero because obviously if you have zero, then you're not you're just going to have a a zero series but so I hope this helps and uh, we will talk to you soon talk to you in the next video